All right, dear students. In the previous lesson, we studied accrued and prepaid expense. So there were two kinds of expenses. One is accrued expense, and one is prepaid expense. Now, if you haven't gone through accrued and prepaid expense, I would highly suggest you to go through that lesson first: accruals and prepayment expense, and then you can come and watch this lesson: accrued and prepaid income. Now, like accrued and prepaid expense income can also be of two types one is accrued income and another one is prepaid income now what does accrued income means accrued income means income earned but not received yet this means we have provided service to someone but that someone hasn't paid us yet okay so the money that we are about to receive in the future it is basically a receivable for the business and it is an current asset for the business so the accrued income is a current asset for the business why because we have provided our part okay we are done with doing our part and we are waiting for the other party to finish uh, or to fulfill their uh, part of the deal okay so we are asking for money for services that has already been provided and this is an accrued income now what are the prepaid income means prepaid income is income received but not earned this means we have received the amount as an advance but we haven't provided our end of the bargain this means we have received the money for something that needs to be provided okay we needs to we need to provide the service in the future for which we have already been paid by someone so the promise that we need to fulfill or the service that we need to provide in the future it is basically a current liability for the business or what happens if we are unable to deliver our end of the bargain therefore we need to return the money to the person who actually gave us the money okay so the income can be of two types beta one it can be accrued income or it can be a prepaid income now let me quickly uh, uh, explain you these concept with the help of an example let's suppose uh, you guys have some property uh, in which uh, i am interested you are not selling the property in fact you are giving it on rent okay on rental basis so you ask me sir we have a property and we are looking for a tenant who can uh, take our property on rent so i told you that you have come to the right place i am also looking for a property in that area so we decided on the amount and the monthly rental that we decided was $1000 okay so the monthly rental was 1000 but uh, there was a condition on my part and the condition was that i can take the property but i will not pay the rent maybe uh, in advance and i'll be using the property for 3 months straight and after using it for 3 months i'll pay you the rent for the first 3 months then i'll use it for 3 months more and then i'm going to pay you the rent for 3 months okay so the rental expense for me it is a expense for me it is a rent expense but for you guys it is a rent income okay because you are going to earn money through renting out that property okay so i'll be making an expense account and you'll be making an income account so there can be two scenarios the one scenario that first scenario that i just discussed that i uh I requested you to take the rent in accrual basis means i am going to use the property for 3 months first and then and only then i am going to pay you the rent for the first 3 months and so on so maybe you agreed because the property was vacant for many years and you said that something is better than nothing at least we are going to be paid for the rent uh, at least after 3 months okay so you gave the property to me i used the property for first 3 months maybe january february march and now i owe you guys a rental for 3 months so for me it is a rental expense and for me it is an accrued expense therefore it is a liability on my part uh, but what about you guys you actually uh, 
हैव एन अक्रूड इनकम ओके यू हैव अर्न द इनकम यू हैव अर्न द रेंट फॉर द फर्स्ट थ्री मंथ्स बट यू हैव एंट रिसीव इट येट सो द रेंटल एक्सपेंस दैट आई नीड टू पे यू यू आर गोना रिसीव फ्रॉम मी ओके सो फॉर मी इट इज एन अक्रूड एक्सपेंस इट इज अ लाइबिलिटी बट फॉर यू गाइज इट इज एन अक्रूड इनकम एंड इट इज अ करेंट एसेट ओके बिकॉज आई नीड टू पे यू द रेंट फॉर थ्री मंथ्स बट यू नीड टू रिसीव द रेंट फ्रॉम मी सो फॉर यू गाइज इट इज अ अक्रूड इनकम एंड इट इज अ करेंट एसेट फॉर यू गाइज ओके सो लेट मी ट्विस्ट दिस वेर यू लिटल बेट आई सेड यू दैट आई टेक द प्रॉपर्टी and i'll pay you rent in advance okay for 3 months so what happens uh, i took the property and i paid the rent in advance for 3 months okay so basically for me it is a prepaid expense and prepaid expense is basically an asset for me okay because i have uh, given you rent uh, in advance for 3 months uh, but uh i will use your property for the next 3 months without having to worry about paying the rent for the first 3 months okay so for me it is a prepaid expense and for me it is an asset why because i have paid for the rent but haven't uh, haven't utilized the property yet but for you guys it is a prepaid income why because you have received the rent for first 3 months but you haven't earned that rent yet why haven't you earned it because these 3 months haven't been passed yet okay so uh, if uh, before uh, these months have been passed so the rental income that you have received it is a liability for you guys why because you have received the money and but you haven't completed your end of the bargain and the 3 months haven't been lapsed yet okay uh, what happens after one month uh, you guys change your mind or maybe your parents and you ask me to please vacate uh, your property because you guys have now decided to sell that property okay so as you are a owner of the property you are landlord of that property uh, so i cannot uh, stay on your property forever okay because it is your property it's your right to sell it whenever you wish to okay so you will be uh, asking me to please vacate this property and i'll be asking you to kindly refund my rent for 2 months okay because i have paid you the rent but you haven't completed your end of the bargain okay so the prepaid income is a current liability for you guys and a prepaid expense is a current asset for me okay so the concepts get reversed whenever we are talking about uh, income okay so let me repeat it once more prepaid expense uh, is a current asset but prepaid income is a current liability okay and accrued expense for me it is a current liability but accrued income for you guys it is a current asset okay so when we uh, were studying the expense account we learned how to make an expense account and for which we used a mnemonic pwap pap account p a a p and for this this uh, this would be reverse uh instead of using pwap as the mnemonic we'll be using awpa now as you can see i have written it with a pencil why because uh, uh accrued prepaid prepaid accrued must not be written in the exam uh, instead we are going to write balance bd or balance cd now there is two types of income my dear students one is accrued income and one is prepaid income now accrued income is the income earned by you guys but you haven't received okay you have given the property to me but you haven't been paid the rent for that uh, the time that i've used the property or maybe uh, it's a fees account uh, i am teaching you i have taught you for the entire month but you haven't paid the fees yet so therefore it is an accrued income for me i have earned that income but i have not received yet okay so therefore it is a asset for me so the opening balance for asset would comes on the debit side because the asset has debit nature so the, if the opening asset is coming on the debit side then the closing uh, balance cd would comes on the opposite side okay so instead of writing accrued i am going to write balance bd and balance cd so this is a uh, balance bd for accrued this is a balance cd for accrued we are not uh, need to mention accrued or prepaid we just need to mention balance brought down and carried down now what is this prepaid income prepaid income means you have paid me the fees for the month in advance uh, as you know uh, the norm is that uh, that teachers uh, charge fees in advance so as the schools 
okay so you have paid the money for the entire month but i, I haven't taught you guys yet okay so if i am i have received the money but i haven't earned that money so therefore it is a liability for me why because what happens if i uh, took the fees from you guys but uh, now i am not giving you the time and now, uh, now i am not teaching you and i am saying i am very busy and I, I have other students for maybe o levels or some other levels and then you will say that uh, may, uh, inshallah you will be get more success in the future but kindly return our money so that we can find a suitable another tutor okay so this prepaid income is a liability for me so the opening liability would comes on the credit side prepaid and the closing liability would come on the debit side okay now whenever i am going to receive the money uh, for fees or maybe commission receive or fees receive or rent receive now the entry would be cash or bank account would be debited and the income account would be credited so this income account can be named as fees receive or fees receivable it's the same thing or commission receive or commission receivable or rent receive or rent receivable okay so bank or cash would be debited and the rent receivable account would be credited now as you may be aware that an income has a credit nature now what happens at the end of the year at the end of the year this income account needs to be closed and this needs to be transferred to where an income statement so if it's a commission receivable account commission receive is credit in nature at the end of the year we need to debit this and we need to transfer it to where income statement so i am just putting uh, some dummy values here uh, maybe start of the year accrued income was 3000 this means uh, uh, we have received uh, we have provided service to someone but we haven't received the commission yet so this commission is owing or accrued at the start of the year so this commission belongs to the previous year okay it is an asset for the business so if the closing accrued is there uh, we need to write it on the uh, credit side that is balance cd if there is a uh, opening prepaid it, it should be written on the credit side so it's not necessary that a p p a all adjustments are given there can be all four adjustment two balance brought down and two balance carried down or there it can be three or two or minimum one adjustment would be there if there is a question for accruals and p payment so what happens if i have received the fees ten thousand this year uh, or commission ten thousand this year the entry would be bank or cash would be debited and commission receive account would be credited and if the exam examiner does not mentions that either we have received the money through cash or by check we are always going to write bank if the examiner doesn't mentions uh, cash clearly okay so we need to balance these both sides the bigger side is obviously the credit side here so we need to add up the bigger side or the, the bigger side would comes on both of the sides and the shorter side would need to be transferred to where income statement so if I deduct uh, this 3,500 from this 12,000, 12,000 minus 3,500, now the remaining balance is 8,500. So this means this is the total income that I have earned during the year and this need to be transferred to where my uh, income statement. This balance carried down on the credit side would become balance brought down on the debit side and this balance carried, uh, carried down on the debit side would become balance brought down on the debit side. Now. Uh, we need to write the dates at the start of the year uh, if I'm uh, in 2020 so the balance brought down would be 1st January 2020 and the carried down would be 31st of December 2020 now after 2020 would becomes uh, 21 okay year 2021 so I'm going to write 1st January 21 here uh, and again the same thing would be repeated for if the I have uh, other balances now the income statement is always made at the end of the year we need to write end of the year date in income statement and the bank and the cash uh, whatever date we have received the money we are going to write this bank or cash and if the examiner doesn't mention the date specifically then we are going to write year end date now uh, the problem here arise the question here arise uh, what is this 2000 is it an accrued income or a prepaid income now you can remember it by two ways the one way easiest way to remember is uh, we are making a ppa account accrued prepaid prepaid and accrued okay we are going to start with accrued uh, and incomes account always start with a then we are going to write p okay so a and p this is accrued income and this is prepaid income 
we can remember with the mnemonic a double p a appa account okay uh, so there is another way of remembering it that uh, now as you can see balance brought down is coming on the debit side now it is a debit side therefore it is an asset and if it is coming on the credit side balance bd then it is a liability okay so this balance brought down is a debit it is an asset now what is an asset uh, is the accrued income an asset or prepaid income an asset accrued income my dear students is always an asset okay accrued income so why is this an asset because we have earned this money this year but this money has not been received yet so therefore uh, the customer still owes us this amount or maybe our uh, tenant still owes us the amount uh, for, for rental so this is an asset for the business and why does an income becomes a liability how can an income becomes a liability income can becomes liability uh, so we have received the money extra okay we have received some amount in advance we have received this money but we haven't earned it okay so we need to complete our end of the bargain this is the income received in advance so if we have uh, received more money than we actually deserve okay we have received extra money then therefore it is a liability for the business so i hope my dear students you understood uh, the underlying concepts regarding accruals and prepaid income and now in the next lesson we are going to solve questions relating to this